Hi, everybody. It has been quite a while since my last um, update via YouTube. Um, I'm, I'm sick right now, and in the, in the meantime, since my last posting, I went to China and Bangkok uh, for, for business trip, and then I've been sick since I got home. So I uh, haven't felt like posting. I'm an, Nose itches so bad. I had a, such a bad cold, and uh, I, I uh, am having a hard time kicking it. So uh, today, I just thought I'd give you a quick update. Um, my teeth are fine. Everything's still going like clockwork. Uh, when I traveled, one of my biggest concerns was the uh, flight over there because it it's gonna it was gonna take um about 20 hours the whole you know from door to door 20 hours uh to go and about 26 hours on the return door to door because i had a connection on the return part so uh, i was kind of concerned about keeping my mouth clean while i was on the road and then when I was in China and Bangkok, I was really concerned about my water pick. Um, would it work with a, a power adapter? Uh, because I couldn't find a, a, a alter, I mean, a dual voltage version of it. So um, I just I bought an adapter, not an adapter, a a uh, voltage, um, you know, to change the voltage, and. Um, and I just kept my fingers crossed because I, I knew I had the portable if if I, um, but then I'd have kind of the same problem with the portable because I'd have to recharge it. And I really hate the portable. I really do because <laughs> the container is small. Um, if Waterpick listens to any of these YouTubes, I'm telling you now, just take that Nano and put a rechargeable battery in it. It's, uh, it's the, the Nano is a great little water pick it's perfect for travel it's got that cool little case it's just a square little block so it packs really good the one that they have the rechargeable um is that gigantic handle thing with the water reservoir in the handle and it's real long and the shape is odd so it doesn't really pack as well as the nano would and the nano lends itself to being rechargeable. I don't know why in the world they have to go with some handheld thing. But anyway, the handheld one saved my butt. <laughs> it was extremely hard to do on the plane because it the the sink is so tiny in those planes um that you you can't really bend over and turn that handle thing on that that uh rechargeable water pick. Uh, to a degree, it, it just may, it's just really cumbersome in an airplane, <laughs> really, really cumbersome. And it might not have been as bad in first class or business class because I think maybe the bathrooms have a bit more room, but I was in coach. So um, there was just really not much room. So I just had to do as good as I could uh, with, you know, the time that I had because one of the problems with it is that it, it was such a hassle um, and took longer and I didn't want to be locked up in that bathroom for a long period of time because there's this is a huge plane and there's only limited numbers of bathrooms so um, but it worked out and I was very thankful to have it and it held a charge and it worked perfectly fine um, the nano was really great because the in the hotels that I typically work with um, they have the razor uh, plug in the bathroom and the razor plug in both Hong Kong, I mean, both China and uh, Bangkok were, had dual voltage, 220 and 110, or maybe it was 120 and 240, something like that. And the plug, you could plug into one side for the lower voltage and the higher side for the the other side for the higher, but it was like the same plug. It was um, I'd never been able to use those because most of the things you want to plug in the bathroom are hot things and they don't work in that. 
because it's a low amp, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know anything about electricity. But I do know that my, um, my Nano worked with just an adapter in China. So I didn't have to use the voltage converter. I just had to use the adapter. And then when I was at, um, when I was in Thailand, it, it actually, I used my own plug on it. So I didn't have to use an adapter or anything because they, they often have the right kind of plugs in Bangkok, uh, same as U.S. plugs. So without the, the bottom, you know, prong, just the two prongs. Um, so that was great. Uh, so then the next thing with traveling to countries where you cannot drink the water from the faucet, um, I went through tons of bottled water, tons and tons and tons. Um, in China, I ended up having to boil water. So in Shenzhen, I was in Shenzhen, which is really just kind of not far from Hong Kong and it's a new city. So the water is supposedly um, pretty good there, but so what I did, because I just couldn't get my hands on enough bottled water at the hotel to, because it took like one and a half big bottles of water every time I water pick. Uh, so, I, so what I would do, and I water pick like five times a day, so it's, <laughs> I water pick constantly. So what I did was I took the water kettle because they all, all the hotels there have a water kettle. I washed it out real good, and I just boiled tap water. And it might have had lead or mercury or God knows what in it, but uh, it, it didn't have bacteria that was going to make me sick because I boiled the hell out of it. And then I just used that, and when I finished using what was in the kettle, I would boil more water. And, um, and that, worked, that worked fine. I, I didn't get sick or anything. And then when I went to Thailand... Um, my hotel had just like unlimited supplies of water. So every time I would see the housekeeping cart, they came by like three times a day in the room. Uh, every time I would see that cart, I would take a few bottles because it would take, uh, at least one and a half of rather, rather large bottles. I don't know, like a liter and a half of water every time I, I water pick. Um, so no drama. It was really good. Everything worked fine. Um, I think everything went easier because I started getting sort of like, uh, sick, uh, the second week. And for the, like the last five days I was there, I was really careful what I ate because I, I was feeling like I was going to get, um, food poisoning. I, I was like trying to get it some, for some reason. And, uh, so I, limited what I ate to very, uh, very bland, hot food. And that meant that I didn't have a lot of, uh, problems with my mouth. I mean, I, I didn't have to chew much. So a good side effect of the whole trip is that I, I lightened up the load on my mouth because when I was here, I was starting to eat things that were a little bit too crunchy um, I was beginning to get a little daring and every night my mouth would hurt. If I did this, my mouth, uh, all this down here would kind of ache. It would ache. I would have to take ibuprofen every day because it was achy. And now all that aching has gone away. So that's, that's a really good sign. Um, I'm supposed to go back at the end of the month for, uh, my first impressions for my finals and I'm going to delay it as long as they'll let me delay it because I still feel like with uh, this process that the longer you wait to get your permanence, the better they're going to fit in the long run. And you won't have to have any adjustments done to them. And I really want to avoid adjustments if I can because um, adjustments are... Um, I don't want to alter it. Like the, the less I do to that permanent, the more, the better I'm going to feel about it. So, um, so if I have to wait till July or August, uh, I got my procedure January 19th. Today is the 15th of May. So we're looking at what, February, March, April, May. We're looking at four months in. Um, and I think I'd really like to push it to six months before I go to my permanence. 
and um, he, he probably won't care. He's really a proponent to waiting as long as necessary for the healing process to complete. Um, and, um, but I do tell, I'll, I'll say that he, uh, on these, he did a, what, I don't, reline on them and filled in the gaps and it has been so much better with these gaps filled in and I have just tiny gaps now I'm a little concerned with how clean I'm getting them I'll find out the next visit if I've been good at keeping them clean but I know that it helped my speech tremendously and um, just my whole the way I talk and everything is much better without all those huge gaps um, I think that's it that's it. I haven't obsessed about the uh, cleaning them. Um, I mean, I, I obsess about water picking, but um, I was going through a, a period where I was scared they were going to stain. But since I start, I switched to hot tea with milk. Um, I haven't. I haven't seen any problems. Now I still notice a smell every once in a while that's kind of disturbing to me. Um, I've brought it up several times at the doctor's office and I think it's just something that you have to um, get used to. I mean, it's not all the time and I don't have bad breath or anything, so I, I don't know, you know, it just, I think it's just something that goes hand in hand with this and they really don't talk about it. Um, but I think anytime they remove them, there's a smell underneath them. And I guess I'm okay with it as long as that smell doesn't uh, you can't smell it like in my breath, but um, if I can start smelling it in my breath, I'm going to get really upset. Um, but just once in a while, I'll be cleaning my teeth and I'll I'll hit something and um, I can smell something. Maybe maybe it was just a pot, some food that was still in there or something. I don't know. But um, I don't want bad breath. I've never had bad breath in my life, and I don't want bad breath now for sure so okay that's all I've got to report um still no pain no ulcers no sores no nothing that's caused from these teeth they feel uh pretty much like my own teeth now um they're not big or bulky and they do they do sit lower um and pitch a little more forward than my permanence will um but they, they're all right, you know, so I, I haven't had any trouble. So I'm still giving the process a thumbs up and, um, I'm still, I'm still happy. I mean, so, uh, we'll, we'll go from here. Have a good week. Bye.